Hi guys, it's Carol. Welcome or welcome back to Pattern Encyclopedia where we talk about all things knitting and sometimes crochet. Two words, Minecraft B. So for those of you who don't know, Minecraft is a really fun game that's been around for years. You can play it on just about any console because it's very basic in its visuals. graphics. It's very basic in its graphics and so they've been able to make it for all kinds of different platforms. I like to play on my Switch but there's a bunch of different versions out there. I've always loved playing Minecraft ever since I was introduced to it. It can be a really relaxing game or a really scary game depending on how you play it. But Minecraft has recently come out with a new update, which has gotten me back into playing a lot recently. Jumping back into Minecraft, I was reminded of how much I love the Minecraft bee. Just look at him. He's so stinking cute. I was playing the other day and I found a bee and I led him into my house and I named him Miguel. <laughs> you don't really need to know that, but seeing these bees in Minecraft that are just so adorable, I really want to make my own Minecraft bee. I mean, how hard can it be? So if it wasn't already clear, I am going to be attempting to crochet the Minecraft bee. Now I think this should be fairly straightforward because the bee is already pixelated so I'll be able to just go through and you know stitch by stitch based upon the color of the pixel make a bee. I don't really know, you guys are gonna come along with me and we'll figure it out as we go. Let's get into the video. So the first thing I did was I made my chart and I use this website called Chartminder. It just allows you to go through and add the colors for each stitch and I treated each pixel as four stitches just so it wouldn't be super tiny. And after I did that I went ahead and got started on my very first panel. So I started by chaining in just one solid color and then I went through and started doing the color work. Here's what it looked like after the first few rows. As you can see, I was feeling kind of unsure at this point. There's just a lot going on. Okay guys, it's day two and as you can see, I didn't get very far on the bee yesterday. There's so much going on with all of the color changes that I got really overwhelmed and kind of frustrated because I would, you know, crochet a couple things and then have to change colors. I seriously don't know how people do tapestry crochet. Like, this is, this is a lot. Um, I don't know. I just don't know. It's looking very interesting. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through today and work up this entire section of the bee. I might change up my technique a little bit because yesterday I was going through and doing that thing where you're weaving in your ends as you go. So for my more expert crochet friends out there where you kind of place the yarn and then I don't know how to explain it. Um, where you place the yarn underneath the stitch that you're going into so that it secures it in place. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's what I was doing yesterday. And as you can see, there are a lot of loose ends that I was doing that with. And so it was making it go like 10 times longer than it needed to go. So I might stop doing that and see if it works better. I don't know, we'll see. I'll keep you guys posted, but my goal for today is to get this section done and see what it looks like. But um, here we go. I feel like I should also mention I learned how to crochet after I learned how to knit. And although a lot of people say that knitting is harder, it comes a lot easier for me since that's what I learned first. So this is definitely pushing the limits of my knowledge of crochet. Okay, so I went through and weaved in my ends kind of to the back, so all of the ends are on one side now. So only one side looks absolutely chaotic, but this is what the front looks like, and I think we can work with that. There's some kind of gaps where I changed colors, but it looks like a bee kind of, right? Right? I think, I think we can make this work. Alright, this, this makes me feel better about this project, so now that I've got one piece done, I'm gonna go through and work on the rest of the pieces. And then I will 
sew them together and st stuff my bee and he will be complete. I'm definitely not an expert crocheter, but you know, it's not terrible. It could be worse. With that, I went ahead and worked on the next panel. Here's the finished second panel. I wanted to kind of visualize what it would look like when it was actually attached. And here's what the back looks like. Okay, so I've just gotten started on my third panel of six. Wait. Five. I just got started on my third panel of five and I'm gonna show you guys real quick why I just don't know how people do tapestry crochet. So this is what my workspace looks like. There's just so much yarn. I'm, I'm pretty overwhelmed, but you know what? I'm gonna push through because I know that it'll be worth it. Okay, here's another panel. Now I just need to make this look a little more like something. Ignore that. Okay, so only three more to go and then we can start connecting these and then make the wings and then the antenna and then the legs. Remember all those loose strands from the last panel? Well, this is me realizing that you can carry yarn in crochet from row to row. And here's the difference. So this is me carrying yarn, and the other was not carrying yarn. The difference is mind-blowing. Okay guys, so I finished all of the pieces, and at this point, I just want to see what this looks like when it's stuffed. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to sew all of these up and then stuff it and just see what we're working with. Because if I don't like how it turns out, then I will probably try something else. But I think this should work. After trying a few different things out, this is the technique that I finally decided to settle on. So with wrong ends facing together, I matched the colors of one of the sides and single crocheted the two pieces together by inserting the hook through the corresponding stitches of each panel. I continued this all along the length of the pieces, changing color based on the chosen side as I went. This technique ensured that the colors were seamless looking throughout and also added a nice boxy touch to the bee. Okay, so here's what it looks like now. You can see it's not perfect siding, but I think I do like it more than the other techniques. So I'm gonna go with this one and I'm gonna do it on all the panels until the last panel and then I'll meet you guys back here when I'm ready to stuff. You guys, look at him. He's perfect. Well, actually he's not perfect. Like he's got a couple of areas that are a little iffy, but besides that, look at him. I love him. I finished crocheting all of the edges together except for this one here. So I'm just gonna stuff it and then patch it up. And then the next step is going to be antenna, feet, and stinger, and wings. So there's kind of a lot, actually. Here we go. Okay, the body is officially done. I love him already. I think I might have added a little bit too much stuffing because he's a bit chubby, but he's so cute. I can't wait to add all of the little details to make it look even better. Hi guys. So I'm very embarrassed to say, but it's been about a month since I touched this project. I've had a lot of life events in a very short period of time, including a move and a new cat. <laughs> so I'm finally feeling settled in enough to get back to it and I'm determined to get this done today. Come here. We originally named this cat Ginny after the Harry Potter character, but it does not fit her because she's very noisy. So please drop your name suggestions. We are desperate. Let me try to show you. She's a little bit squirmy. 
Here's the baby. I know, you were so upset. We've had her for about two weeks now, and so that's just been a whole process. But anyways, enough about me. We're here for this guy. I think next I'm going to work on the wings and I'll show you guys exactly how I decide to make them. Okay guys, so I've been messing around and I think I figured out how I'm going to do the wings. So to make the wings, we have to work in a few sections. So starting with your white, you're just going to follow the instructions that I have on screen here. So chain three, single crochet two across, chain one, single crochet two across, and then you're gonna chain six, single crochet four, chain one, single crochet four, and finally, you're going to chain four, single crochet two, chain one, and single crochet two. Feel free to pause as you need for each of these sections just to get the instructions and meet me back here if you are actually attempting this as well. All right, so here is what the first section will look like and I'm gonna go ahead and continue to provide the instructions for each section as I go. Also, as I'm looking through some of this footage, I'm realizing I didn't explain very well how to actually make the body of the bee. So following the charts that I made, I went through and each tiny square represents a stitch. So I would go through and chain as many stitches as I needed for a panel, and then I would just go through and switch colors based upon the chart. I wasn't originally intending for this to be a tutorial, but I figured I might as well share what I did and what steps I took. So this is how you'll want to attach all of your pieces together. And there's really no key to attaching, just kind of weave everything together until it fits. Moving on to the antenna, I went ahead and grabbed my black yarn, and I would recommend a more structured yarn for this if you have it, one that's not so floppy, because my antenna did turn out a bit wobbly. After making two antenna, I went ahead and moved on to the legs and the stinger, and I'll go ahead and put the steps that I used on the screen for you. And all that's left is to connect everything to the body. Okay, everyone. After many hours and much frustration, I present to you the Minecraft bee. He is extremely not perfect. I put his wings on backwards. His antenna are very floppy, but I still love him so much. He's so cute. I think my favorite part are his little legs. I have a few tips for you if you are thinking about trying this project yourself. First of all, if you're a beginner crocheter, get ready for a wild ride. This was deceivingly difficult. Second, I would probably double check if I were you exactly which way things go before you attach and crochet because I put his wings on backwards. It was already too late to redo it, so he's just he's just gonna be incorrect, and that's just something that I'm gonna have to live with. But you don't have to. I've learned a lot of things from this project. Mostly that I don't think I'll be doing tapestry crochet for another several months, at least. Was it worth it? You tell me. You tell me. With all that being said, I'm still glad that I did this project. This was something that I was really, really excited about. And that's something I love about crochet is that you can just kind of make your dreams into reality. Whatever you can think of, you can make it. And I know that's cheesy, but it's true. Yeah, I, I do really like how he turned out. Anyways, I think that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.